morning of October 8th, 2020, out here in our uh, South Research Field. What you're looking at here is a highly inbred line of CBDV plants. Uh, this was an experimental population. Some really interesting fasciation in this particular inbred line. Um, fasciation is something that has been mistakenly called polypoid uh, you know, in the, the online cannabis circles for a very long time. But really it's just a, it's an interesting mutation that happens rather than a ploidy change. So these are all diploid, uh, diploid plants. But in this particular lot, we're seeing about 80% of all the plants showing <clears throat> the sign of fasciation. It's, we've never seen, you know, more than one in a thousand, maybe 2,000 in our uh, F1 hybrid lines. So every single one so far was fasciated. Here's the lone exception that's not. Those beautiful pink pistils. Definitely not something you want in your field in terms of productivity. Uh, you can see how dense these flowers are. They have a tendency to rapidly rot, uh, get affected by botrytis and other pathogens just because of the density. <clears throat> but man. <laughs> such a beautiful quirk and to be able to see it manifested in literally 80% of this population is uh, definitely a sight to behold wow this one's got multitude. Normally you would only see this on a, like a single shoot, a single branch, and the rest of the plant would look normal. I think that's the first one I've ever seen that had four of its four of its lead shoots actually fasciated. Pretty incredible. Here's a great example. You can see that it's starting to starting to succumb to the elements. <clears throat> this plant never ceases to amaze. Even when it's throwing mutants that you don't necessarily want from a productivity standpoint, sometimes it's worth, even just for a little ornamental value. But again, the downside is, is that these things self-destruct quickly. So once that moisture comes in, you'd really want to take this fasciation uh, out best to get rid of it, cut it off your plant if at all possible. When you find uh, in our varieties, it's a, it's a fairly rare mutation that happens in our F1s. Another reason to only grow F1s for field production.
see just a slight, slight fasciation. It's kind of interesting is uh, one of the tendencies that I've actually seen is plants that have a minor bit of fasciation end up being epic producers. So it wouldn't surprise me if that trait has stuck around because it is associated with larger yields up until the point where it manifests at a high frequency. Truly a treat, however, to walk through CBDV rich ornamental variety, basically. I think we'll probably replant this one again next year just because it was so interesting. They are really at their prime right now. I think by this time next week, yeah, every single one of them will be completely decimated by that extra moisture and botrytis setting in. How can you not love this plant though? Good example of a highly productive, slightly fasciated plant. It's really packing on the flowers, great structure, beautiful color. There's some botrytis setting in. It's really too bad. The plants that oh, spoke too soon. I say the plants that are not fasciated are really, really nice in this particular line. But <clears throat> looks like it's destined to be an ornamental. <laughs> wow. I guess we need to just eliminate that other 20% now that isn't fasciated. We got ourselves something you can grow in your front yard just for the conversation. <laughs> 